students, uh, I hope uh, you uh, enjoy your holiday. Well, uh, the topic for today is what you have learned before. And there's no other topic than uh, several theorems. Yes, this is not new to you. We have some theorems that you need to know to solve certain problems concerning circle. These theorems we refer to as circle theorems. There are a number of them. We shall see them one after the other. The ones we are able to cover today, we will cover. If we are able to, with the others that we are not able to cover, we will continue in our next class. The first theorem of circle says, the angle, the angle which an arc of a circle subtends at the center of the circle is twice the angle which the same arc subtends as any other part of the circumference. Now, this is one of several theorems. You will need the understanding of this theorem to be able to solve certain problems on that circle. Now let's illustrate what this theorem is saying. You all have seen a circle before. That is a circle. And from your primary education, we know that this is the center of that circle. We also know that this point to this point, which is any part of the circumference, is called an arc. Now let's break this theorem down. This theorem is saying that this particular arc from here to here, this arc, any angle that this arc makes at the center, that is this angle. Let's call that angle theta. Now what the theorem is saying is once this angle can make this well, once this arc, sorry, can make this angle at the center, and this same arc, you, as you can see, at the center is to the same, look at the word same here, that this same arc, from here to here, the moment this arc makes any angle at the circumference, let's call that beta, then there is a relationship between this angle and this angle. What is the relationship? The relationship says that the angle at the center, that's theta, is twice the angle at the circumference. Watch the movement of my hand. This angle is twice this angle. And what does that imply? It says theta is twice beta. That is the first theorem of circle. Now, I want to illustrate something to you. He didn't say, the theorem didn't say this arc must make this angle here. No, he didn't say that. The theorem said the arc, once it makes the angle at the center, it can make the angle at any other part of the circumference. It means that it's not compulsory. The diagram must be like this. Look at this other diagram. Look at this. This other diagram. Look at the same arc we illustrated here. Look at the center. Look at the same arc we illustrated here. This arc that makes the angle here theta. According to the theorem, it didn't say it must be this particular place. It said any part. So if this arc that makes the angle here, it if it makes another angle here like this, that's another part of the circumference. 
and call that guitar. Then this album is also twice this. What does this imply? This imply that anywhere from here to here is also the same thing as that. So that is the first theorem of circle. Now, let us uh, use this theorem to solve certain problems. Look at this circle. Here, we have this. We have the center. Let's use this arc this time around because it didn't say a particular arc, it said any arc. So it does not compulsion must be here. Let us use this arc here. Let this arc make this angle here. And let's call this 50. It's an absorption. Let's assume that is 50. Now, the moment this arc makes an angle at the circumference again, like we illustrated, if you are asked to find the value of this, let's represent that with x, then what is showing is saying that x will be what? 25. Because the angle at the center is twice this. So we have 2x is the same thing as 50 degrees. And x will be 50 over 2. Which will give us 25 degrees. So that is what the first theorem of circle says. So you must be able to illustrate this, use this anytime you come across questions that are related to this. The second theorem of circle, the second theorem of circle, is what we are going to go into now. What does the second theorem say? It says angle, angles in the same segments are equal. That's the second theorem. Let us illustrate that with a diagram. Let us illustrate that with a diagram. Angles in the same segments are equal. Now, this is the circle. Of course, you have to draw another circle again because we are dealing with circle theorem. And what is the segment from your primary education? If you divide the circle into two parts, this is referred to as a segment. This is referred to as another segment. Can you see that now? Just like we are cutting your oranges. You know the part that you always wish to give out when you cut your oranges into two. You know the part you always wish to give out. So that is one segment. The other one is another segment. Now that part that you would normally give out when you cut your orange is referred to as the minor segment because it's a, it's, a, it's a small part. The other part is referred to as the major segment. Now, what does this theorem say? It says angle in the same segment. It says angles. Angles. Those are the key words. In the same segment. Now, what this theorem is saying is this. Let's take care of, let's concentrate on this segment. This angle, this one here, this angle, that's one angle. Of course, the moment we say angles, we are, talking about, we are talking of more than one. Look at this angle again. This one is in this segment. Look at this, this, this angle. Let's call this beta. If you look at the diagram very well, theta and beta are on the same segment, they are on the major segment. What this one is saying is anytime, anywhere, that theta must be equal to beta. That's what this angle is saying. That theta must be equal to beta. It implies that if you take care of, if you look at the minor segment too, if you make any angle there, more than one. Look at this, and look at this. If you call this x, and you call this y, this second theorem is telling you that the value of x 
and the value of y must be the same. Now, let us use numbers to illustrate this. Let's use numbers to illustrate this. How do we make use of this? One add we solve problem relating to this when it comes out. Okay. Now, when, when we are we are we said we are going to use a diagram to illustrate this. Look at this circle. Oh, look at this circle. Look at this. This is the center. And this is one segment. And this is another segment. Normally, they won't draw this line for you. You know, I, I am mean, just using that to illustrate. Now, look at this angle here. And look at this angle here. If you have here to be 50, for an example, and you're asked to find this, it, is, it implies that your theta here must be equal to 50. Is that clear? That is what we mean by saying angles on the same segment are equal. If this is 50, this is 50. That is the second theorem for circle. Now, let us move. Remember the first theorem says this. If this is 50, then this is 25. I'm just taking back a bit so that we can get the flow. Angle at the center is twice angle at the circumference. Another theorem, the one we just finished discussing, angles on the same segments are equal. Now let's move to the another theory, the third one. The third one. What does this theorem say? This theorem says angles in a semicircle is equal to a right angle. Now, what does the right angle mean? The right angle means an angle that has a value of 90 degrees. What does this diagram say? It says, what does this diagram say? Sorry. It says if I have a circle, it said the angle must be in the semicircle. Now, what is the semicircle? The semicircle is half of the circle. Half, if it is the middle. So the upper part is a semicircle, and this part also is a semicircle. Semicircle because the, it is half of a circle. Now, what is this theorem telling us? This theorem is telling us that this angle here, this one, made by on this semicircle, this value of this angle is 90 degrees anywhere. I hope that's clear. There is theorem, the first theorem that says angle in a angle at the center of the circle is twice the angle at the circumference. One other one says angle on the same segments are equal. And this one says angle in a semicircle equals right angle. Now there is a mistake students normally make here. Let me show you that mistake. Look at this. Look at this diagram. Look at this. What is the mistake? Students that come across this diagram because of this third theorem that says angle in a semicircle uh, is a, a right angle triangle. Students that see this diagram 
I want to relate it to that theorem. Can assume that this is 90 because of because the diagram actually look alike. This look at this diagram. Look at this diagram. They look alike. And if you consider the theorem that says angle the semicircle uh, is a right angle triangle, this is the correct one. If you call this, if you call the value of this angle 90 degree, it is very incorrect. What is the reason? There is a sign in this diagram that shows that this is a semicircle. But that sign is not there. What is the sign? The sign is this point. If the line does not pass through this is the center, or the center of the circle is not illustrated in the diagram just like this, please do not assume that this is 90 because, because it is definitely not 90 cut. Remember, reason you must see a point in there. Or when you see the diagram, they will, they will tell you that let's assume this is A and this is B. If you don't see the points there like this, do not assume that it is a semicircle. If you don't see the points, the, if there can be if an information there is telling you that AB is a diameter. This also is allowed. Okay, that is the third theorem for circle. Let us go over the theorems again. Let us go over the theorem again. The first theorem angle at center, this angle is twice this angle, x, y. x is equal to 2y. That's the first theorem. Second theorem this segment and this segment, this angle x, assume this is y, the second theorem says x is equal to y. And we have the third theorem, the third theorem that says angle in a semicircle, provided this must be a semicircle, this angle, this one is 90 degrees. That is the third theorem. Now, let's move on. We have some more of them. We have some more of them. We are going to look at another one, which is another theorem for seven. And what does that say? That theorem says opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. Good, that's another theorem. Before I illustrate, use a diagram to illustrate this, I want you to see some keywords there. One, opposite. Two, cyclic. Three, quadrilateral. Four, supplementary. Let me let us look at those four words. When something is opposite, it means in front of each other. When something is cyclic, it means it has a, it has a circle. It is a circular shape. A quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. Submentary angles add up to 180. Again, in front of each other, circle, four-sided figure, add up to 180. Opposite, in front of each other, if opposite means in front of each other, sorry, cyclic means a circle, but lateral means four-sided figure, supplementary means add up to 180. Now look at this. If you have a circle, and you have a four-sided figure, inscribed in the circle, then what you are looking at 
is referred to as a cyclic quadrilateral. Without this circle, without this circle, it is a god, it is referred to as a quadrilateral. This is a quadrilateral. But the moment you inscribe it in a circle, it is like that. Like this, or let us make it more beautiful. Look, the very circle. You have four-sided figure. That's a quadrilateral now. This is referred to as a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, what's this story telling us? He said in this diagram, opposite angles in front of each other. This angle X. Where is the angle opposite it? Here. Why? He said opposite angles, X and Y, of a side quadrilateral in this diagram are supplementary. Add up to 180. X plus Y must be equal to 180 degrees. That's what the cell is saying. In such a way, if this is A, the one opposite it is B. Also, A plus B is equal to 180. Now, what are we trying to say? If by tomorrow you come across a diagram, probably in your objective, and you see this, and you see this diagram, and you have a value of 100 degrees here. And this value is unknown. Why? And you are asked to find the value of Y. To find the value of Y, you will make use of this theorem. What does that theorem say? Opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. This angle and Y are opposite each other. It has been proven that they are supplementary. If they are supplementary, they must add up to 180. If they must add up to 180, it means 100 plus Y must be 180 degrees. And you collect your life terms. You have y equal to 180 minus 100, which is equal to 80 degrees. So we have that as the fourth theorem. So what are we going to do now? We have other theorems that we will look at by the next class. But for now, let us move around these four. Let us take it one after the other. Let us use some exercises to take it one after the other. Look at this exercise example one. If I have this and I have this at 60 degrees and I have this as x, if I'm asked to find the value of x, I will say. 2x is equal to 60 degrees. Now, what does, where does the 2 come from? The first theorem says the angle at center is twice. The 2 comes from the word twice. That's how this is come from. So you have x will be equal to 60 over 2, and that is 30. Theorem 1. Theorem 2. If I have this, if I have this diagram, this and I have this as I have this as 80 degrees and I have this as x and I am asked to find the value of x. The value of x in this case x is equal to 80 degrees. 
the second theory that we discuss today, angles on the same segment are equal. Another illustration of this, another illustration of this, supposing this is not 80, supposing this is 2 and this is 100, 100 degrees, and you are asked to find the value of P. If you are asked to find the value of P, according to the second theorem, you just say, if this angle of zinc segments are equal, then 2P must be equal to 100, and P must be equal to 100 over 2. And that, what does that leave us with? That leaves us as P equals 50 degrees. The third theorem, let's use a diagram to illustrate that. Look at this. This is a sex, the center, and this is a diameter. Remember, I told you that this point must be shown in the diagram before you can use the top theorem. And you have this diagram. If you are given this as x, and you are given this as 50, and you are asked to find x, you can make use of the third theorem that says angle in a semicircle equals 90 degrees. With the dot theorem, you just say this is equal to 90 degrees because it is a semicircle. And by the time you add the three angles together, which you did in your primary school, sum of angle in triangle is 180 degrees. You have x plus 90 plus 50 to be equal to 180. Because the sum, there some of that, that is the triangle there. Let's call this A. B, C. If you do your arithmetic here, you have x plus 140 equals 180, and x equals 180 minus 140, x equals 40. The third theorem. The fourth one, and the last one. If you have if you have this, if you have this diagram, and you have a side of the lateral here, you got this 120 degrees, and you got this 120, and, one, and this y is an assumption, and you have to find the value of y. Using this last theorem that says, Opposite angles, you can see that 120 and y are opposite each other. Opposite angles are supplementary. Supplementary means they must add up to 180. y plus 120 is equal to 180. y equals 180 minus 120. And y equals 60 degrees. So those are, these are just some of the circuit theorems that we're able to cover today by the next class. We will continue from here. Don't forget, angle at the center is twice angle at the side. Angle at the center by an arc is twice angle at the circumference. Angle at the same segment are equal. Angle is a exactly equal to 90 degrees. Opposite angles of the side of the entire are supplementary. I hope you have uh, enjoyed the class. And I hope if you, any of these things you have forgotten, this is an avenue for you, an opportunity for you to remember again. So, till we meet same time next week, I will say goodbye.